If you work in a large organization, you may have hundreds of applications that are JSF based, and it is unlikely you will flip a switch to move away from them. Spring Boot does a good job of separating concerns and supporting various templating languages that are more familiar to front-end developers. While you maintain a JSF stack, you may want to take advantage of Spring Boot features, so in this tutorial we'll show you how to integrate Spring Boot in JSF 2.2. If you are not aware, JSF 2.2 has many new features such as HTML5 support, allows for a more natural templating with pass-through attributes, security enhancements, and much more. Creating a Spring Boot project from a Spring Initializer website, we'll select a web and generate the project. After downloading the project, we'll import it into Eclipse and update the dependencies we need to configure JSF. JSF is just a servlet, so both JSF and Spring MVC can coexist within the same project. When doing so, it makes for a friendly way to ex expose REST-based application services that sit right next to your application. Creating a configuration class, Configure JSF, we will register Faces Servlet and Spring Boot by creating a servlet registration, which has a Spring-friendly design to register servlets in Servlet 3.0 containers. When Spring Boot starts up, it will automatically find any type of servlet registration bean and register it with your container. You will notice that we extend servlet registration bean in order to grab hold of Faces Initializer, and pass in servlet context to enable us to set application configuration parameters, which we'll show a little bit later. Since JSF2 supports annotations, the dependency on faces context.xml diminishes, but we still have the need to register Spring's EL Resolver and Phase Listener. If you aren't familiar, Spring Bean Faces EL Resolver allows you to use Spring Beans in JSF context, and delegating phase listener multicaster delegates to Spring Web Application context. With this setup, an application can use either Spring Manage Beans or JSF annotations such as Manage Bean. We will create the faces context in the source main resources meta INF, which is the default for Spring, and add the EL resolver and phase listener. Next, we need to create a sample JSF page. To demonstrate that a JSF XML file can reference both the Spring Bean and JSF Manage Bean, we will create an index.xhtml file in the Spring Boot default location source main web app. At this point, we are ready to run our application and access localhost 8080 index.faces. Spring Boot incorporates many Servlet 3.0 features, which will be an adjustment for developers as web.xml isn't needed anymore. Java server faces is configured using context parameters, so we need to initialize a Servlet parameters programmatically using Spring. To do this, we will create a class that extends Servlet Context Initializer, a Spring Boot class that allows you to configure a Servlet 3.0 context programmatically. Next, since JSF has a configuration that can be applied based on environment, we will use a profile and set spring.profiles.active equals dev in the application properties. Thanks for joining in today's Level Up. Have a great day.